Um, but basically, as I said, this evening, I'm going to be sharing with you how to get your brand to stand above the noise and attract more clients. So I would love it if you guys would engage with me. We're going to go for about 30 minutes. Um, but if you guys could just send a message into the chat, it would be great to know if you would like to do that. You know, I would love to know a little bit about you guys. Maybe you could share what you do and a yes, if you are here to learn about how to get your brand to stand out. going to open the chat here. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Andrew. Fantastic to see all of you guys engaging. I really, really appreciate that. So as Reshma kindly introduced, my name is Hannah Kathleen Hawkshaw, and I am a brand consultant, international speaker, property investor, and founder of iGen Creative, which is my company. And we are a brand agency that is passionate about building brands that matter. Just to give you a bit of a rundown as to who I am, well, my background started as a fashion blogger, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment, because that's quite an important part of my personal story, which is something that we're going to be talking about in relation to how you guys can leverage your personal brand to build your business. Back in 2017, I was very excited to win Best Fashion Blog at the National Blog Awards. I've also had the pleasure of speaking in many different countries around the world. Um, I've been to Africa speaking. Europe, North America, which has been quite exciting. And I know many of you guys here want to use speaking to build your businesses. I've also been lucky to be featured in multiple media outlets. And I've worked with clients across industries, including finance, fashion, and medical sectors. But one thing that's very important when it comes to building a brand tonight, as I said, we're going to focus a little bit more on personal brand and how you can use the micro voice as in your personal brand to complement and build the macro voice, which is your company or organization. But at the end of the day, a key component to our personal brands is where it all began. And I think it's quite important to take note of that, especially this evening, because it will illustrate to you the power of attraction marketing and the power that you have with your voice. So this here is a photo of me. And this is at a time when I was very sick. So to give you a bit of a background, back in 2010, I got diagnosed with seven or eight infections. Then I got the swine flu. Then I got glandular fever and post-viral fatigue syndrome. So I had a bout of different viruses and illnesses that really caused my immune system to crash. And at the time, I didn't take a lot of photos. So that's why this picture is very pixelated because I am also a singer songwriter and I kept doing singing competitions when I could as a outlet to keep myself sane. And so this is a still of a video that I actually have an old video of me performing. But this was a time when I went from being a very active teenager, playing tennis, dancing, singing, songwriting, all of the different things you do when you're a healthy, active young person to having no energy, not being able to socialize, not being able to go out of the house and my life turning upside down and my health turning upside down alongside that. But at that time, I decided to start a fashion blog. And that is basically what the catalyst was to take me to where I am today because it was about the personal brand and leveraging social media as a channel to build communication. So here, this is a picture of me when I won my blog award back in 2017. And that girl that I showed you the photo of a moment ago was where it all began. So what happened was when I was sick, I found myself you know, you, there's only so many movies you can watch. I'm sure you guys can all relate in lockdown. There's a limited number of things that we could do. I was basically in my own version of that when I got sick. And one day I stumbled across a website called blogger.com, which some of you may have heard of. And there's also WordPress. There's many different vehicles that you can use to start a blog. And so basically what happened was I decided to create my own platform to talk about something that I was passionate about. And that's one of the things that Reshma talked about earlier on, talking about things that you are passionate about and sharing and leading with your why. And that is a very important thing that you need to do when it comes to speaking, but also when it comes to building your personal brand and creating a communication channel and a story that people can actively engage with. So what I did was I talked about what I loved. My big passion at the time was fashion. I loved writing about runway shows and the different 
styles that were at the time. But eventually I realized that if I wanted to tell a story that was engaging and people could relate to, it was so much better if I led with my personal brand. And so I started to share my personal style and document what I was doing in the hopes of inspiring people and sharing a message of inspiration, but more importantly, what I was passionate about. So basically what happened, long story short, is that blog became the catalyst for what I do today because I learned how to build my personal brand and I learned how to use attraction marketing. And so soon I found myself being approached by brands like boohoo.com and Daniel Wellington asking to work with me and people who were approaching me saying, who designed your website and who did your logo and so forth. And it was all just down to what I had learned and the skill set that I accumulated starting my fashion blog. But the key element of that was utilizing my personal brand and then taking the internet as a way to build that communication channel and that's exactly what it doesn't matter what business you're in your personal brand is something that engages people and social media and the internet is a tool that you can use to amplify your voice and attract more opportunities which is what we all want at the end of the day and I always joke that if a teenager who was really sick in her bedroom can do that then there is absolutely no reason that all of you here this evening who are business owners and putting yourself out there and using your voice to make an impact can do it too you definitely can do it too. And my hope this evening is to share with you some insights as to how you can go about starting to do that and apply these strategies. And of course, the ones that I've learned over the years as well to help you build your business. So that was the catalyst, as I said, and I'm actually gonna share a screenshot. This was the blog in 2012. This is what it looked like. So it was nothing fancy. It definitely evolved, but this was a communication channel. And now we all have our smartphones, we have computers, you can choose to use a blog as your communication channel, you can use Facebook, you can use LinkedIn, the whole point is that we're creating touch points with your clients to amplify your voice and attract more opportunities. And so this was then obviously that blog led to opportunities like this. So here I am on the left at the equivalent of the Oscars in Germany. There's a big event called the Bambis that take place. And I had the opportunity to go to a fantastic, fantastic evening with many different celebrities and influential people in Germany, which was a lot of fun, I have to say, <laughs> was the highlight of last year. And I've also had the chance to speak and connect with incredible entrepreneurs around the world to help them recognize what they can do to boost their brand, create more opportunities and create compelling materials that will get them bigger and better results. But in a nutshell, it starts and ends with your brand. So by sharing a little bit about my personal story, the hope is to illustrate to you the power in attraction marketing. When I got started, things were certainly not perfect. My experience was a, a, you know, learn as you go along. I got a lot of hands-on experience at a very young age that enabled me to recognize what you can do. And then of course, over the years, I spent more and more time learning about it and ended up shifting all of my energy into the online endeavors and the entrepreneurial space that had started to create new opportunities to basically recognize, okay, if you can do it in one industry, how do you do that and apply it to another one? And so I shifted those strategies to entrepreneurship and business and, and music as well. For example, earlier this year, I launched a single, my first single and got on all of the national radio stations in Ireland, got playlisted with some huge artists. You know, I've just found out today that my song that I launched in March is still being played in the top 20 tracks in one of the major stations in Ireland. And that was because all of the strategies I've leveraged, I just applied to my music and applied to build relationships and to create opportunities. So whether you want to get more speaking engagements, whether you want to attract more clients, whether you want to be featured in the media, it's about understanding what your brand is and how are you portraying it in a way that people understand it. And more importantly, they want to work with you or they want to be around you. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. But one of the opportunities that also came my way, thanks to all of the experience that I managed to accumulate and all of the strategies that I implemented was getting the opportunity to go and meet Sir Richard Branson on Necker Island. So here is a picture. The first time I went, I've actually been a couple of times now, which is really, really 
an incredible experience where we were sat at dinner here talking about things like his relationship with Nelson Mandela and launching Virgin Galactic, just incredible things. And obviously he, for me, is an entrepreneur who I really admire and he thinks so outside of the box that it was such a special experience to sit down and have that conversation. But that stemmed from starting a fashion blog in my bedroom when I was a sick teenager. So the possibilities are endless. And I think at a time like we're facing at the moment with so much uncertainty, as long as you have access to tell your story, you can build a channel of communication. You're going to hear me say that a lot that can help you create opportunities. So I hope by sharing a little bit about my story can give you some insight as to what is possible when you take action and you start, you start communicating basically and start building your brand. So why brand? We've touched on it already, but brand builds opportunities. Here again, it's another photo of me and Sir Richard. <laughs> um, you might notice there that my hair is not fully dry. I didn't get time to dry my hair after playing a game of tennis on the island with a bunch of incredible entrepreneurs who I was there with. It also builds perception and it also creates influence. And these are three key things that you need to do in order to build your brand and attract more opportunities. But one of the most important things to consider is perception. You know, it's like if you look at the power of a book cover, people say don't judge a book by its cover, but we all do. We all look at the book cover to consider whether or not we want to read it. And there are stories of books that have changed the cover and not touched the content and had more success with one cover over another. So basically what you need to think about is we are building your book cover. What is your book cover? What are we presenting to the world? What are we leading with? And is it what you want your clients or ideal clients to see in order to create the intrigue around working? with you. This is why you have to start with your brand. But one thing that's very important to clarify is the difference between brand versus branding. And this is something that, I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of entrepreneurs and spoken in many different locations. And sometimes these words are thrown around, but the difference is not clearly broken down. So to differentiate it for you, brand is what lies at the heart of what you're doing. It's your core values. It's your core messaging. It's what you represent and what you're committing to do for your impact journey. And branding are all of the different elements like your logo, your marketing materials, your website, anything that you're doing to build the brand, anything that you're doing to get the name out there. So that's a really important thing to consider. And obviously both of these are very important, but the main one is the brand because without the brand, without the message, without truly knowing what you're representing, it can inhibit you when it comes to how you're presenting, because if you don't fully identify what lies at the heart of the brand, you don't know what you're trying to portray. So that is really, really important that we get to what lies at the heart of your brand. And that's what we're talking about this evening. So a couple of quick facts. It takes 10 seconds for someone to form an impression of your brand, but just like anything, these figures are always changing. So it's probably a little bit less than that now. But the main thing to consider is we only have a very short time period where people are making their decision about us. Now, of course, you can improve your relationship with somebody or build curiosity later on, but the first meeting is really when we want to create impact. So what we want to be thinking about is how are we presenting you so that it's very clear that people become curious around what you're doing. And also consistent and congruent branding increases income by up to 23%, which is quite a significant figure. So it lays more importance on why you need to take so much care with your brand and branding. But I've got a question for you guys now. And usually when I'm in the room, I would say, put your hand up. But as Reshma said earlier on, we're not quite in the environment where we can do that. So I'm going to encourage you all to engage with me in the chat here. But if I was to ask you guys a question, who wants to be a celebrity? Are you saying yes or no to that question? Okay, I love, I love that I've got a couple of yeses here, but generally the answer is what I'm seeing more commonly, which is no. Usually when I bring this question up at a live event, everyone's hiding behind their chairs saying, oh my gosh, I do not want that. That does not sound appealing. And that's completely fine because the connotation that surrounds the word celebrity is not something that most of us want. But if I shift that question and instead of asking you who wants to be a celebrity, but I ask you who wants to be the go-to person in your industry, 
Who is saying yes to me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can see yes, yes, yes. And that's exactly it. I mean, that's exactly why you're all here. But it's an important, it's important thing to consider. And that is our goal. Our goal is to make you the go-to person within your industry. And the way in which that we start that process is by exploring a couple of these key points. So number one is what is your primary goal? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to be known for? What is the whole purpose of you being here and using your voice and using your company to make a difference? This is something that you have to think about. Obviously, if we were working in a one-to-one -one capacity, I'd be encouraging us to have conversations or if we were doing a, a longer workshop, we would be exploring this in more detail. But right now, I really encourage you to sit here and think, okay, what do I want to be known for? And start writing down words on your sheet of paper. And this is an exploratory process. I would recommend sitting with this afterwards and spending, you know, 15, 20 minutes exploring this because when we can begin to identify that, then we can reverse engineer from where you want to end up and what you want to be known for and how you want to make an impact backwards to determine what does that look like? What does that translate to within your brand articulation? Next, we need to consider what do you stand for? What values lie at the heart of your brand? Now, one thing that can often happen with um, many companies, as I'm sure you guys know, have you know operation manuals and different documents with the mission, vision, values, and so forth. But so often, too often, the values are left on the sheet of paper <laughs> and they're put in the drawer and forgotten about and not lived within the brand. But the reason we need to identify this is because this is the key reason that people will choose to be around you. People will choose to work with you based on what you stand for. And we all know that we're all drawn to the people who share our values and who lead with that and who show us what they're made of. And so it's really important that you consider, you know, what do I stand for? What lies at the heart of my brand that I want my customers or potential collaborators to know about me? And this is all part of the brand language and the articulation of what we are building for you that will then be presented to your audience. And next, you need to consider who are your customers? Who are your ideal clients? And who do you want to attract to work with you? Whether it be a collaborator, whether it be a client, I suggest breaking it down into multiple profiles so that you can better understand those people. But you have to know who you want to speak to in order to make sure that your presentation speaks to them. Because otherwise, like what can happen, and this may be something that even if we were having a conversation right now, we might discuss is, well, I can serve everyone. So sometimes your product or service, obviously each of you will have different product or services, can serve a wide range of people. And that's fine, but we still need to break them down into different segments because you'll talk to different groups differently. And I always say you're going to speak to a bachelor of 25, you know, who's interested in driving the nice car and, and getting the ladies completely differently to how you'd speak to a 45-year-old mother of three who's so much more focused on her kids and creating the future that she wants for them and so forth. And these two examples are very different and you need to keep that in mind when it comes to your marketing and brand presentation because you'll speak to people differently. So this is another reason why you have to break down your customer avatar so that you can recognize who do you want to speak to, how, do we going to build, how are we going to build the brand so that it resonates with those people and so forth. And so a couple of things that you might want to consider when it comes to breaking down your customer profiles is who are they in terms of age, location, occupation, family, and goals. And also what, in terms of what questions do they have? What desires do they have? What problems are they facing? And in turn, what solutions are they looking for to help them solve that problem? And this is something, if you guys want to take a screenshot or take a picture, then feel free to do so because um, it, it might take a while to write it all down. <laughs> But these are really important things to consider and, and they're quite um, straightforward in terms of what you're considering. But this is one of the things like the values part that sometimes people want to skip over. And if you don't do this, you're going to slow yourself down. It's going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to how you present yourself everywhere online and offline if you take a little bit of time to go through this because you'll get so much clarity around how to present what you do. 
And you'll also want to consider your product strategy. So we're talking here about different components of both your brand, your audience, and your actual strategy in terms of structure, because everything is connected. You know, without one piece, it doesn't work. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that we're putting together in order to make it super easy for your clients and your potential collaborators and, you know, people who have events who are going to invite you to speak to understand you and how you fit within what they're doing. So one thing that you'll want to consider is your product strategy and building your value ladder. So here is a visual example of a value ladder. Have you guys heard of the term value ladder before? Maybe you could let me know in the chat. Okay, awesome. So we're getting a mix. So basically, I mean, the value ladder, I'm sure we've all heard, there's a lot of different fancy lingo that everyone uses on different webinars and events. But in a nutshell, a value ladder is basically the process that people are going through from meeting you to working with you at the most connected level. Um, and a really good example of a value ladder that I use quite frequently is a dentist. So if you think of a dentist, quite often you'll see a free teeth cleaning advertised. I think we've all seen that somewhere before. And so you think as a customer, oh, fantastic. You know, I really have wanted to have my teeth cleaned for a while. Of course, I'm going to take that appointment and I'm going to book it. And that's like an irresistible offer. It's the carrot that you dangle in front of the donkey to make them interested. <laughs> okay. So if you consider that example, then as a customer, when I walk through the dentist store, having my free teeth cleaning, sometimes. I might go in thinking, you know, I'm not really planning on spending any money today, um, but I'm going to take my free teeth cleaning service. And that's fantastic. And so I sit down then, um, perhaps as the dentist is cleaning my teeth, he or she might say to me, oh gosh, Hannah, um, you know, do you happen to smoke or drink an obscene amount of coffee or something like this? And I might say, well, you know, I don't smoke or I don't drink coffee excessively. And then he may say, well, your teeth are a little bit more yellow than usual. And of course, then I'm sat there thinking, oh gosh, I don't want this to be the case. I want my megawatt smile. Who doesn't want that? And so then he may say, well, you know, don't worry because we actually have a, a great offer at the moment on our teeth whitening service. And of course, I'm going to say, yeah, this is the try us. This is the wow product. As you can see here on the value ladder Ooh, imagery here it says, the low end entry point is the try us product, the creating of a wow experience to get them wanting more. If the dentist says to me, you can have a teeth whitening service as the starting point of our relationship, it's solving a problem of mine that he's just illustrated to me. So he's illustrated that a problem is that my teeth are more yellow than they should be. He's highlighted it to me and he's saying, here is your solution. And of course, it's the natural next step for me. So he's not selling me everything yet, but he's selling me something based on a problem or concern that I have. And I'm saying yes to that. And that is me then saying yes to the low end offer. And then when I come back next time for my teeth whitening, he might say, well, you know what? You've got a couple of teeth, Hannah, that are not quite as straight as they could be. So why don't we fix that with Invisalign? And then all of a sudden I'm saying yes to Invisalign because I've got another problem. It's the natural next step and it's helping me to achieve a result that I want. And so that is a great example of a value ladder because it's the natural process of somebody finding out that they have an issue, whether or not they're aware of it, that the person can solve and knowing that it can be solved in the way in which it's presented to me because it's a progression, I'm saying yes as the customer. So this is one thing that you should consider when it comes to your business. You may have different value ladders if you've got multiple service offerings, but if you consider this and actually break it down in terms of what is the entry point, like what can I give that's high value to set an impression of me that will get people wanting more, that will get my ideal clients, that will get my ideal collaborators, that will get events bookers, thinking, who is this person? That is what you need to be considering. So again, I recommend taking a photo or a screenshot of this, um, unless you want to write it down, of course you can, but it will probably be a bit more speedy if you take a picture. And then as you can see, the next step then is what is the next 
offering? What is the high end offering, the premium offering of the highest value for your customers that can again create an unforgettable experience? If you can break this down, then this will apply when you are speaking, it will apply when you are you know, launching an online funnel, if that's something that some of you may want to do. Now we're in this unique period with the current global situation. It may be something that you want to capitalize on. And this is very important. In order to do any of that successfully, you have got to know the steps that people are going through from meeting you to becoming a client in terms of the customer journey. And the value ladder is how we build that. And what you'll actually notice is as a, you know, real life example, at the end of our time together today, I'm going to share something with you that is totally free for you guys to opt in for, but that is me dangling a carrot. You know, if you consider you guys being the donkey, that's me dangling the carrot and sharing something with you that I know can be of high value to you that will mean that you're going to take a step with me. And that's exactly what you need to consider as well when you're in front of people who you can serve. What can I provide them with that's high value that will give a result whether or not they move forward, but also gives them the opportunity to take a step with you. So does that make sense to everybody? Maybe you guys can share a message in the chat and let me know if that makes sense. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. That's what we want to hear. Fab. Okay. And then the next, the next thing to consider that we're going to be talking a little bit about this evening is your online presence review. <laughs> so one question I have for you is, are you Googleable? And this again is another question that I ask at events when I speak. And this is really, really, really important. So are you Googleable? Consider this to yourself because what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an exercise. Um, and the reason we're gonna do this exercise is because quite often we, you know, it, it comes back to the perception that we've talked about earlier on. Brand is perception. Are you actively taking control of the narrative around your brand? Are you doing it at the highest capacity? And this example, I actually am going to reference a time when I was in Wales speaking at an event and one guy came up to me afterwards and he said, oh my gosh, Hannah, I'm so happy that you asked me to do that exercise. And I said, I'm so glad to hear that. What happened for you when you Googled yourself? And he said, well, this guy actually came up who's a criminal in the local area, it seems, who has been imprisoned for 10 plus years and he has the same name as me. So it's not me, but he has the same name as me. And if people are Googling for the first time and don't take the effort of reading into it, it's not exactly necessarily setting the best impression for me. Um, and that's an extreme example, but generally what will happen when you Google yourself is you'll either find all you, you'll find somebody else with your name who is ranking higher than you in the search engine, or you will find a mix of things. Um, and basically what you wanna do is if you find all you, you still may be, the likelihood is that it can always be improved. It can always be optimized. There may be other things that you want ranking higher in order to drive people in a certain direction. But if you're falling into the other two categories, that's not ideal and we need to start fixing it. And the reason this is really important is because now when we go to events, whether online or offline, probably more online at the moment, generally what you're doing is you're, especially offline, handing out your business cards. And that's great because you're networking, but also those business cards are often put on the side or, you know, we don't necessarily go to what people want us to go to. The first thing that we do is we Google people or LinkedIn them or Facebook them. And so often entrepreneurs are not taking control or optimizing the narrative that's being displayed. Like, you know, you might, for example, not have a LinkedIn profile picture, or you may not be utilizing the intro section on your Facebook profile to say who you are, what you do, and how you can help people. Small things like this make a dramatic impact and could be the difference between you closing a deal versus not closing a deal. Um, so what I would love for you guys to do right now, just for your own knowledge, is to Google yourself um, and also then consider this evening, if you look at your social media profiles, would you want to work with you? It's a really simple question. We don't look at our profiles like this in, uh, enough in general, um, but that question in itself, I guarantee you there will be things that you notice that you can improve. Could be something as simple as having a picture of you speaking as your cover photo, maybe adding a profile picture if you didn't have one, or if you have a picture of you 
and your family is your profile photo. Maybe you might say, okay, instead I'm going to put a headshot there. And if I want my family on my profile, they're going to go in my cover photo, for example. Just letting people see you and engage with you and putting that best foot forward from a professional perspective. And how do you then, once you've Googled yourself, once you've reviewed things, how do you boost your credibility? There's a couple of things that you can do right out of the gate. The first is having an authority website. So I touched on earlier today, the difference between your micro voice and your macro voice, your micro voice being your personal brand and your macro voice being your company brand. And sometimes people will have multiple companies. So there's going to be multiple macro voices, but your personal brand is what we're going to use to elevate your company brand. And so what you need to do is you need to have a presentation of who you are, what you do, and all of the different projects that you may have to get your message out there, especially when it comes to speaking. You know, when people are organizing events, they're going to want to know more about what you do. And having your own website, your authority website is the way for you to lay out in plain, simple terms exactly how you can help people and how you can give an impact of some sort. So to illustrate your products, your services, and how people can work with you. And also then things that may be of interest, like pictures of you with people that you've met or speaking and so forth. And also you can leverage the media. You can leverage media outlets to build your credibility. So as we start to build your brand story, again, like social media, we want to create touch points. We want to create more exposure for you. We want people to see you. And a great way to do that alongside speaking is to leverage media features. So articles in newspapers, in magazines, radio interviews, all of these things they will stem from everything that we just talked about, building your personal brand and then telling your story. And this is all feasible. And one thing, if any of you specifically would like some assistance with the media, um, then that is something that we can help with as well. I have a fantastic partner who specializes in getting coaches, consultants, speakers in the media and getting you more exposure. So that is definitely something that we can help with too. But just two things that you can do or start to be aware of is putting yourself out there in terms of getting your story defined and packaged up nicely through your authority website, and then also leveraging different outlets to get your message out there in the media. But what we're gonna talk about now, in terms of building your brand and what you can start to do today, the simplest way to start doing that is using social media. But one of the objections that I sometimes face is, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm not so social media savvy and I don't know where to start because there's so many social media channels. I mean, if you think about it, Snapchat, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, the list goes on. I mean, share a message with me in the chat if you've ever felt overwhelmed or confused as to where you should look to because that's a reality that we face. And, and the thing is, things are only getting busier. There's more apps and social platforms popping up on a daily basis. But what you have to do is you have to hone in on who you are, what your brand is, and connecting back to the very first question that I asked, what is your goal? Like, what do you want to be known for? And who are your customers? And basically, that's what we're going to do in order to hone in on what social channels you're going to leverage. So one thing that you'll notice is as you start to build out your demographics and your profiles, you'll find out where those customers are hanging out. So let's just say, for example, you know, I have a hair tie company. I sell nice little hair ties for, um, you know, young girls to young women. I might say I'm going to focus all of my energy on Instagram and TikTok because they're the two platforms that they're hanging out the most. And that's a, a really obvious example because it's a younger demographic, it's girls, it's their very visual platforms. But that's what you need to think about. You know, are your ideal customers slash ideal collaborators on LinkedIn? Are they using Facebook more? Um, LinkedIn's a little bit more formal. Facebook may be a little bit more informal. These are things to be considering when it comes to what social channels you're going to leverage. And then off the back of that, you're going to consider what is your content style? And this all connects back to what is the brand voice that you're building. Um, if you consider an example like Gary Vaynerchuk, I don't know. You guys can just nod because I can see your faces. Do you guys know who Gary V is? Gary Vaynerchuk? I can see a lot of yeses. Okay, fantastic. So if you consider Gary V, his brand is very relaxed. He's very open 
to the point, like somebody may say, let's say in your face at times, he really kind of shakes you, but he's so authentic to himself. Like he will, I mean, I, I think I've seen him in a suit once in one YouTube video I watched of his and he's very um, authentic. Sometimes he'll drop some swear words, but that's authentic to his brand and his content style is consistent. So even on LinkedIn, that's a little bit more formal. He's still consistent with his tone of voice, just like he is on TikTok and Instagram. And so that's an example example of what we want to be thinking about with you. What is the tone of voice? What is the style? What is the brand message that we are presenting and curating? And once you've basically considered that and what social channels you're going to use, commit to mastering those. And this is an example that I can um, share with you. I decided, uh, you know, a few years ago that I was going to focus my energy on Instagram and I was able to quite quickly get my account to 20,000 followers. And now I have over 100,000 followers. And that was because I decided that Instagram was going to be a platform that I put a lot of energy into and that will help you to to build momentum and it's so much better if you can focus your energy initially to get your message out there on one or two platforms and commit to that and be consistent actually build that momentum than it is to spread yourself too thinly so that's something that if you're thinking right now what are you actively doing focus your energy to build that momentum and choose those channels based on what we've just talked about does that make sense you guys can just nod because i can see your faces here <laughs> managed to master the zoom slash sharing screen connection. <laughs> um, but what I would love to share with you guys quickly is a three-step marketing formula. So maybe just let me know with a hands up or whatever feels good. If you want to use the chat, if you would like to know this formula, basically what I'm going to share with you is the three-step formula that you can leverage to create a better structure and more impactful structure around your marketing. So would you like to know what that is? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for engaging with me. I really appreciate you guys being so uh, being so open. So an example, I'm going to share two examples of results that you can get when you use this. So this screenshot is of a Facebook campaign that we did a while ago um, following this formula. And in the first two days, we were able to generate 59 targeted leads for our client. And as you can see here in the image, um, the part that's circled, it says relevancy score. So if you, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Facebook ads in too much detail, but basically Basically, the relevancy score is how relevant is the advertisement to the customers slash potential buyers that were seeing the advertisement. And as you can see, there's four tens there. So the messaging was on point for this particular campaign. And this is an example of what you can achieve with the formula that, that I'm going to share with you. Another one is, you know, $29,000 in a week for a coaching client of mine who basically, this was after our first call, actually, um, we were having conversation, he's a great guy based in the US, and we just talked on a few points that he could optimize within his uh, communication and taking his message to market. And within a week of actioning it, he closed $29,000. Um, so I mean, who wouldn't want that this week? <laughs> it's nice, a nice result. Wouldn't you guys agree? And that stems back to this marketing formula that I'm going to share with you. And I actually refer to it as the bank method. So I suggest that you bank on bank. Um, and what I'm going to share with you now is what that is. So the structure of the formula is BA plus N equals C. And I would recommend, you know, you have a sticky note of that beside your desk, you put it on your computer, you if you have an office, you want to put it behind you in the wall, I would do that to become really familiar with it so that it rolls off your tongue and you're always thinking in this way. But basically, the formula is as follows. BA is brand awareness. So what are we doing to, in a nutshell, make people know who you are. I always say you can have the best product, you can have the best service in the world, but if people do not know who you are, then they can't buy you. And so we have to be thinking, what are we doing to actively get our brands out there? What are you doing to make your ideal customers, your potential collaborators, opportunities be aware that you exist? Next is nurturing. So once people start to get to know you, that's great, but if we don't take the time to build that know, like, and trust and to nurture them, then we can't take them to the final step. So what are you doing to build the relationship with the people who are becoming aware of you? What is the nurturing part of the process? And finally, when you do those successfully together, build brand awareness and nurture that growing audience, you can equal conversion, which I think we'll all agree is the 
desired end result. <laughs> but one thing that's very important is a lot of the time, I'm going to take online as an example here, people will come online for the first time and think, great, you know, I'm going to launch a funnel tomorrow and I'm going to have a flow of clients. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and it's nice to have that positive outlook. But if you're not building your brand awareness and nurturing, then how can you expect people to convert? And I mean, if you consider, if you consider a relationship as an example, if you meet somebody for the first time and you say right away, you know, I'd like to get married and have kids with you, um, it can sometimes feel a little bit too forward. And so it's the same thing. You don't want to do that with your clients out of the gate. You want to build that relationship with them and let them build a know, like, and trust and take them to conversion. That's not to say it can't be done quickly. It's just a process. It's about making people feel comfortable. It's about making them engage with the brand so that they can be a client for life rather than a customer that buys one time and forgets about you. And that's the key thing that we're talking about here is how do you build relationships that will convert time and time again for you? You do that by following this process and actively considering what is the flow? Brand awareness plus nurturing equals conversion. Brand awareness plus nurturing equals conversion. And having that as your framework, whether you're doing a paid advertising campaign or a social media content plan or speaking like I am right now on a, a live webinar or at an event, hopefully post COVID when we can engage with people in real life again, <laughs> this is the flow that you need to be thinking about. So does that make sense? Can you guys give me a yes, if that makes sense? Do you think that you feel like you can actively follow this flow within your content strategy and your plans moving forward. Awesome. That's amazing. Thank you for engaging with me. So in a nutshell, I'm coming to the end now, um, but in a nutshell, it's brand awareness. Once you start building your brand, getting yourself out there, letting people know who you are and how you can help and how fantastic you guys all are, you can start to build your influence. And influence not only attracts more clients, but it also creates more opportunities in the term of access. And access is basically the opportunity to meet and work with the people who you want to meet and work with. I mean, when I started my fashion blog, do you think I sat there and thought, yeah, one day I'm going to have dinner on Necker Island with Sir Richard Branson. I'm going to play tennis with him as my doubles partner. No, <laughs> I did not think that. But by doing this process, it created the opportunities like that one that helped me to build my business and create more opportunities for myself. And that's exactly what we're talking about this evening. And so here are some of my favorite pictures of some of just some of the fantastic people that I've had the pleasure of meeting and spending time with. You might recognize some of those faces. Um, I've got Charlie Sheen down here, which was quite interesting. This is at a big event I went to in California. Got Sir Richard again. Um, had the opportunity to meet Sir Bob Geldof as well, which was amazing. I mean, fellow Irish musician. So that was a really, really cool experience. I actually met him in South Africa at the Mandela family home. So, you know, some crazy stories, but, you know, also got Ray Lewis, who is an amazing um, friend of mine and an NFL hall of famer, and also Niall Rogers, who is a pretty well-known musician that some of you may have heard of. <laughs> um, and, and these are just experiences that I had the pleasure of having off the back of building my brand and, and leveraging all of the things that I've shared with you this evening. But relationships are a really, really important about element of what you want to do, whether it's building client relationships or relationships with people who are influencers in certain spaces that you want to work with, that you want to collaborate with, that you just want the opportunity to sit down and learn from. I'm sure we all have a couple of people that we would write on a list thinking, who would you love to spend time with? That's also one of the things that you can start to move towards when you start to take note of what you want to create in terms of impact and how you want to inspire people and engage people and make a difference. And one thing that I know um, from Elliot and Speaker Express is it's really about making an impact. And that's the same thing that I'm all about. How do we use our voices to make a positive impact? This connects to our businesses and it also connects to the relationships that we're building. So I thought I would share those with you guys. But just to recap quickly, take action, define your brand message. Who are you? What is your goal? What do you want to be known for? What are we looking to get out into the world? 
Number two, your product strategy in terms of your value ladder and what is the customer journey that you're taking people on with you. Number three is taking the time to review your online presence. So please, please, please go away and look at your Google profile. You look at your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your social media channels to see how you're presenting if you haven't already done so. And more importantly, start tweaking. You know, if you have questions, you can reach out to me. I'll share my details shortly. Um, but just start tweaking, start playing, start seeing how people engage with you when you begin to make changes. Number four, choose your social channels. What platforms are we using to get your message out there? And finally, the three-step marketing formula, which is to bank on bank, brand awareness plus nurturing equals conversion. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and got value. I tried to fit as much as possible as I could into a short time frame because I'm a big believer that, you know, the more I can give you, the more, the more change you can make positively within what you're doing and the more opportunities that you can create for yourselves and the more impact you can create through your businesses. So I hope you got a lot of value from that. I would love if you could share with me in the chat, hopefully a yes, I got value. <laughs> um, and finally, what I'd like to leave you with is a free 19 minute audio. So this is the first step in my value ladder that I shared with you guys earlier on. I think it's important to have a visual and real life example as well as in terms of what you can do. And this audio basically shares the three keys required to accelerate your brand in today's digital economy. And the way in which you can get that is by going to the following URL, which I will actually just share in the chat for you guys as well, in case you want to just click on it, which might be a little bit easier. So there you go. That's the URL for the free audio. And then if you guys want to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, you can do so this way. Awesome. So thank you so much. I'm going to stop. I don't know if you, if you guys want to take a picture of this or anything, feel free to do so. Um, and then I will pass. I don't know if I need to pass the host back or how you want to do this, Rashma. <laughs> but really. First of all, thank you so much for that, Hannah. It was such an amazing pleasure. presentation. Wow. Thank My you. My pleasure. I mean, this... Just so, like you said, just so much value in that. This it was like half an hour or a little bit more than that, but it it felt like the content was hours and hours and hours worth. So thank you. Yeah, so trying to share the Cliff Notes version. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We did, we did. I think you can tell by everybody else's comments as well. Everybody's thanking you. They said it was fabulous. They said they got a lot of value from it. So. Um, uh, the link doesn't seem to be working. No, I've just tried it. Let uh, me check. And it's come up with the 403 for it said it wasn't secure. I said I'll click on it anyway, and then it's come up with 403 forbidden. So it's blocked by some um platforms or security measures. Oh, I had the same thing. Oh. That's strange. Okay, okay, wait, let me send you a different URL. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. No, 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 <laughs> this no. one should work. While I, just... while I make my dinner, I'm interested <laughs> to listen to 18 minutes more, Hannah. So uh, I, I was like clicking on it straight away. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Catherine. I am, um, the URL is actually updated and I totally spaced that it was updated. So when I went to it now, it's redirected it to the correct URL. So this should be accessible for all of you guys now. Yeah, that looks a lot more promising. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, great. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I signed up for it as well, Hannah. So, oh, awesome. Uh, you know, yeah, it was it was truly, truly amazing. Thank you so much for My joining pleasure. us. Um, My you know, pleasure. I hope you can join us again soon at some point. Definitely. No, I really enjoyed being with you guys. And, you know, any way that I can help, just reach out to me. I'm more than happy to point you in the right direction. Has everybody, you can find all of Hannah's uh, details here. Please do click on her on her 19 minute audio as well. Um, I'm sure that's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And all of her details are there as well. Her Instagram details, her Facebook details, everything is there. I mean, I'm very easy to find. If you just look for Hannah Kathleen Official, I mean, that's my website. That's my okay. Instagram. Okay. That's my, <laughs> um, and then iGen Creative 
com is my my website but once you guys have access to this then you know you'll get an email and you'll see what my email address is as well okay excellent thank you very much awesome. thank you Hannah. well i am so sorry but i need to jump off but thank you so much for having me rashma i truly appreciate it and i'm looking forward to connecting with you guys all more soon absolutely thank you very much for being here Hannah. my pleasure thank you for having me bye 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 Okay, lovely people. I mean, how brilliant was that, right? It was, it was really, really good. And I love the way she was able to differentiate between um, brand, your personal brand, so the brand and branding, that they're two, actually two different things. So I thought that was really good. Uh, you know, I'm sure everybody got lots and lots of, uh, you know, lots of other points from that as well.